<laughs> Welcome in, everybody, to the Craft Beer Republic. Thanks for coming out and drinking in person and all that stuff. Yeah. It's nice to drink with people. Uh, I am Greg. I am host of the show, but more importantly, the smartest person in the room. This is Monica Potter, the head brewer. She's a nerd. We'll find out soon enough. Uh, I'm so excited for this. We've been talking about this collaboration beer for the better part of a year, I think. And yep. uh, it finally happened. So we're going to get to that in just a few. Uh, it's delicious. We're going to talk about the names, talk about the beer. We are also drinking Hummingbird Lager, Born to be Mild, another collab, and Pale Rider. So we'll work our way through some delicious beers because doing this sober is very nerve-wracking. So... Uh, <laughs> We'll get into it very quickly. Uh, and thanks to everyone that not only came out, but that submitted some names for the Guava Goza. Uh, yes, we, we got, enjoyed those. We, we had a lot of fun, <laughs> and I can't wait to get to Nick's. A um, few things. We're going to try to collab, like I said. Monica is going to tell us all about her and her background. Well, I'm going to make her tell us. Uh, <laughs> we're going to drink some beers. We're also going to read a few of the listeners' submitted names and questions. We have some, some live questions, and feel free to bring more questions over uh and if for some reason you're not drinking please go to the bar and start drinking uh but first things first monica is going to spend the next four to seven hours explaining how to properly harvest wash cultivate and store yeast oh perfect yeah yeah never mind uh <laughs> anyways it's friday let's let's start doing some drinking since we have four beers in front of us we don't need to like start off with some background first let's start off with some beer first okay should we tell the people about the collab about the guava goza. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the official name is. These guavas are making me thirsty. Yes. And we had a list of names. We'll talk about them in a few. But I am uh, very not hydrated. So let's hydrate. Yeah. Uh, tell the people about the beer. Cheers. First Cheers. Of all. I'm so excited Cheers. for this. Pardon me while I drink. Tell the people what they should be tasting, what went into this, and then we'll talk so, about the, the collab and all that. So in front, it's gonna be light, refreshing, a little bit of a tartness. Um, you'll get a note of guava on the nose as well as right in the front there. And then it'll be slightly salted at the end, which makes you wanna drink a little bit more. So yes. I always enjoy that ending. Yeah, that's, that's my favorite part about the Goza is the salt. Yes. It's, uh, yes. It kind of balances out. It's, it's just it's real nice. I, I went on the very soft side of the salt because um, I am not a huge fan of the overly salted Goza. Yeah. Um, it can be a little bit too much. It can be a little bit like a salt lick. Yeah. So yeah. wanted to keep it refreshing, keep it easy to drink. Yeah. And this, yeah. Is, this is exactly that. A uh, little backstory. We've been talking about collabing for a while because we like hanging out and drinking together. We're one of the few people that can talk to each other for more than five minutes and, yeah, yeah. and it's great um so we got together like what can we what can we make and i was like can we do a goza yeah and uh monica agreed which was which was very surprising and nice yeah i so. was i was excited because i had never made with that before so i was definitely down to try new things yeah and whenever people ask me like hey what's your what's your favorite fruit to add to a beer guava every time yeah i was just happy that it was available and in season <laughs> right <laughs> is it hard to get fruits that you want? Uh, depending on the time of year, yes. <laughs> okay. Well, it worked so out well. I'm glad that guava was the one that was available. Did you know that it was guava season? No. Okay. No. You learned something new every day. <laughs> uh, yeah, we got together. We talked about it. We came over for a brew day, uh, hung out all day. I, I bugged Monica for a good seven hours, I <laughs> it think. It was not bugging. <laughs> okay. I, I, I shadowed her like a puppy for like seven hours. was like, put me to work. It. I loved it. Uh, we, we gave a tour or you gave a tour at some point. I did. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and they that got was to a fun tour beer. too. The that people was. that we took around like really were into beer. So they hung out for the rest of the collab. It was great. Yeah. That worked out well. You guys, have you, have you tried the guava yet? Are we, yeah. Do we like? <laughs> Thank you. I did all of it myself. Yeah, it was all Greg. Yeah. I, <laughs> I think I did three things. Um, it's so good. It, it came out, my, my big fear in quotes, because I did so much of the recipe process, was that like it wasn't going to be salty enough. This is perfect salt. You, you nailed it. Um, I actually just bought a book on Gozas to make it the like German way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went da, just da. whatever it told me. Yeah. Well, um, it worked. And on the light side, because I'm not a huge salt 
like really big salty uh, fan. Sure. So I, I wanted that like very hint of salt yeah. at the end there. And then, yeah. And then you nailed yeah. it. And then we added it on hot side. Some people add it on cold side in the fermenter. Um, I wanted to add it on cold side, just do it, or I'm sorry, hot side. Um, just doing like water chemistry. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually learned something from this beer. Uh, I definitely want to add salt, a little bit more salt to our sour recipes. Okay. Because it seems like it tones down the sour a little bit. It, the sour yeast can get a little bit too sour if you don't tone it back a little bit. It just so, kind of balances things yeah, out. Yeah. So okay. I might add a little bit more salt to the next recipe. I, li I like that this is created a whole new process for you. Yes, I love it. Nice. Um, one of my favorite parts was getting to name it, which normally is one of my least favorite parts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I got some really good listener submissions. And uh, if you guys don't mind, I was going to read some of the listener submitted names that we got. They're pretty good. Uh, all right, great. So my really bad names were uh, Sugar Were Goza Down. I was like, <laughs> all right, you know. Uh, every day is a guava day. Any ludicrous fans out there? No? Okay. Uh, Vanessa says guava y sal. She was taking the Spanish route. Uh, that would have like, been good. That, that would have been, been good. good. Uh, John Michael said fresh out of ideas. <laughs> Helpful. I'm happy with that one as well. Yeah. I liked that one. Are there any like 80s, 90s wrestling fans? Because <laughs> <laughs> my, my favorite submission co comes from Pablo and it's guava rush. And if anybody <laughs> is a Legion of Doom fan, you'll understand. Uh, Shannon said guava goes for a ride. Erica, I liked that one, too. Yeah, it's, you know, perfect on theme. Erica said uh, Greg's gear grinding guava goza, which I couldn't pronounce, so uh, we skipped on that. <laughs> one, of my, one of my other favorites came from uh, a guy in the crowd named Nick. Two chains. <laughs> Nick, you want to come up here and say two chains? No? <laughs> Why not? You say it all the time. Come on, Nick. It's the first time no? Nick's ever been shy. <laughs> uh, the only problem with naming it Two Chains was that in order to order it as Two Chains, you would have, you would to, have walk to yell up, it. Yeah, yeah, you have to walk up to the bar like, and yell Two, two chains? chains. That was for Nick. <laughs> uh, and then uh, the homie Chew Your Beer, who is here somewhere, he had gears to guava. Today was a gua day. <laughs> Guaterade. What goes up must guava down, and you know that's a great one. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty. It's very sciencey. And of course, CBR loves to tongue job salty guavas. I debated that whether would I should be on brand. It though. would be. Yeah. I almost yeah. didn't say that one out loud. <laughs> uh, um, but these guavas are making me thirsty. I'm a big Seinfeld fan, I'm a so huge I loved Seinfeld it. Fan. Yeah. Uh, and Jerk Store wasn't a good one. No, so, no, no. But uh, yeah, these guavas are making me thirsty. One out. Uh, it's uh, not foul or profane in any mm -hmm, way, mm -hmm. and uh, you don't have to yell it when ordering. We're keeping it PG. Yeah, which is <laughs> hard to do. So um, anyways, this is not going to last much longer. Can I ask you some questions about you now? Of course, yeah. Okay. Hopefully everybody's joined the, uh, the Goza, and we'll get to next. We're going to have the Hummingbird Lager just a second. But first, let's find out about the biggest nerd in the room, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. Because being a nerd is it's good. I'll take Once it. Once again, if anybody has any questions for the nerd, please. Oh, there's yes. more. All right, bring yes. them up. I'm going to get to those please in a minute. Please ask me your questions. Yeah. Uh, so first, let's find out about you as a, as a drinker. We talked off air a little bit about how in our 20s, we liked to find ourselves in our drinking career yeah. by drinking entire bottles of liquor. And now we can't even come close to doing that. Yeah. When did you start liking beer? Ooh, that was when I started working at BJ's. So that would have okay. been um, 2014. We're only nine years in, but a long way, you know? <laughs> Wait, was, uh, your, was your first beer at BJ's? No, okay. no. So um, I, I had good beer at BJ's. My first good beer was probably at BJ's. Okay. Um, Jeremiah Red. Uh, so I actually liked their pale the best, okay. the Piranha Pale. Just the only one I can remember the name of. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. The Jeremiah Red is great, too, but um, Piranha Pale was actually my first favorite. Um, the Brown was a second. Okay. It still is. I still it's love both. Yeah. Um, Piranha was all Cascade hops back in the day, mm. and that was my favorite uh, version of that beer. And um, still to this day, I love that like old school OG West Coast style. Yeah. So the Cascade hops, Mosaic, Centennial, those sort of 
hop characteristics. Those are my favorite. Clear and dank. Yeah. 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 Uh, piney. Then, yeah. Piney. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kind of sticks to your tongue a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so from BJ's, well, I was going to ask this later, but then you went to another beer restaurant, right? Yeah. So after BJ's, I went to Lazy Dog. Um, Golden Road had made all of their beer. Um, and halfway through me being at Lazy Dog, they changed to Melvin Brewing, um, making great. all of their house beers. Uh, but they were all... Um, recipes written by their head chef actually and oh. um, they were all very good yeah. so and I thought Melvin made them even better so um, Agreed. yeah they, so I, I mean, was like very happy better. yeah yeah once yeah. they stepped in so um, I was very happy about that but they they also had like a beer um, like a beer subscription program and yeah. they were really into it so I, I enjoyed that as well they were one of the OG like beer subscribers yeah things yeah. I don't know what you call that <laughs> Um, so when did you start brewing? I started home brewing um, like 2015. And did your husband like hold you against your will and make you no, do a decoction so I, mash or my something? My husband was the one who really had the passion for it uh -huh. to start. And um, he wanted to get a job in commercial brewing. And that was something that I was definitely going to stand behind. <laughs> so um, we got our own... Uh, homebrewing kit from the CD Valley homebrew shop and started with a robo brew which is an all electric brew system um takes forever to heat up and boil and uh not forever oh, but good. but good stuff uh but we we started with all grain because he wanted to do commercial brewing and that sure. would have been the best experience for him so we started doing that and I uh quickly became obsessed with writing my own recipes and making my own homebrew and decided that I wanted to brew as well. Um, so he was the one who really started that for me, but ended up that I loved it. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's, I don't know about other home brewers, but writing the recipes is my least favorite part. <laughs> why, why was that so fun for you? I don't know. It's like the most creativity, okay. I guess. Um, and I love the different notes that you get out of grain, but also the different smells and tastes and different things that you get out of hops at different times in the brewing process. Yeah. So um, it was just super interesting to me and fell in love with it. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm impressed. I just, that's <laughs> way to dive in there. Um, all right. You think we should move on to our next one? Sure. Okay. What's, what's next in life? Is everybody thirsty? Should so, we move on? Hummingbird Vienna Lager is going to be our next one. Okay. That one is going to be 4.7 ABV, uh, mostly Vienna in the recipe for this. Uh, a little bit of Munich, uh, some just pale malt, and a little bit of DRC. So that gives you a little bit of that caramely flavor, big malt backbone. Um, and just a really enjoyable all-over lager. Um, nice and malty. Yeah. Easy to bit, drink. Um, a little bit of sweetness. Really enjoyable. Yeah, not um, the classic color you would expect when you, someone says lager. Yeah, you think so this, pale this is a little bit more on the uh, golden amber yeah. side. It was that by design? Uh, yeah, I mean, around the amber color is where you want to be. Yeah. So, yeah. It's perfect. Super crushable. Very light. A little little sticky sweetness on there. Yeah, yeah. Nice for watching a football game. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm So back to your brewing. Do you have any formal brewing education? No. Uh, so I, I did not go to school for brewing, but I did go to school at Davis for chemistry. Um... I did not graduate with a chemistry degree. Okay. Uh, what what I did was I went to Davis and um, I did some research um, with a professor there. And I was synthesizing short interference RNA strands for cancer research. Okay. And I everybody loved knows the, what that means, right? <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I wanted to do um, pharmaceuticals at first when I went into college. And uh, when I went to Davis, I actually didn't really know about the beer program. Oh. But I just decided that that was not my passion. The uh, the being in the lab for 18 hours a week and watching things drip to purify <laughs> and 
all of that. So um, is it like what you see in the '80s movies, where it's just like beakers and things dripping down, like very slowly? Pretty much, like pretty waterboarding much. yourself, <laughs> essentially. Yes, yeah. yes. So uh, there were filter things that I would have to filter my product, and uh, it would be just like I filter with media here. It's very hmm. similar media, um, but I would have to watch things drip for like six hours. And uh, that wasn't my favorite thing. So uh, I Could decided... Could you at least drink while you were doing this? Or? No, oh, okay. no, unfortunately. Um, so I just decided, you know what, I'll take a year off. I'll figure out what I want to do. And I ended up at BJ's as a server and um, ended up loving beer. So it was great that I got to go into something that actually is a little bit of the, a chemistry background. Yeah. So I'm happy to be here. So you learned on the job. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So um, I started... In chemistry, I ended up loving beer, so I started home brewing with my husband, right. um, and then came in for a brew day with him and David because uh, my husband actually was one of the assistant brewer he, brewers here initially. Ended up falling in love with it, and when uh, James ended up going over to Ennegrin for a full time brewing position, I took over here as a part time brewer and supervisor, and just absolutely loved it. <laughs> brew, brew house supervisor. No, no. So supervisor on the floor, like bar supervisor. Okay. And then um, in the brewery, I was assistant brewer one day a week for a little while and then just moved organically up from there. So uh, when David uh, decided to open his own brewery, we had right. about a year to get ready to replace him. And he decided that that was something I could do. So he, he, he really gave me... The chance yeah. and Brad absolutely gave me the chance as well. So I really appreciate that. And uh, it was good timing. I mean, right place, right time. But yeah, I'm glad I got the opportunity. So that was March 2021 ish, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So March 2021 was when when you, um, when you officially. Yeah. So that I uh, that was when I officially or no, it was March 2022 that I officially took over. 22. I yeah. I feel like it's we're hard. still in 22. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard with COVID, like all of the time just yeah. goes. But Well, and I don't write checks anymore because I'm not 900 years old, yeah. so I never know what year it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so 2022, uh, March, I took over, and uh, I'm almost a year in. Nice. So. Well, the beer's delicious. Thank you. So, so far, so that. good, right? So far, so good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank Seems you. Seems like she knows what she's doing. Uh, well, speaking of Dave... Uh -huh. The next beer you, you collabed with David. Yes. Let's so talk the about next that. beer I collabed with David on this, which was super fun. Um, we decided to do an English style beer, uh, dark mild, but we decided to do a little bit of a twist on it and lager it instead of using an English ale yeast. And I think it came out super um, easy to drink, super yeah. flavorful. Um, has a little bit of like those dark, chocolatey, roasty malts in it. So there's a ton of flavor, but really light, easily drinkable, um, and 4% ABV. So you can have a ton of these. Yeah. And um, self-admittedly, I'm not a huge mild fan. This is so easy to drink. It's very light. The, uh, the chocolatey, the roasty, it comes out as it warms up a little bit. Yeah. When I had my first sip when it was ice cold, it was just like, oh, that's going down real quick. And, yeah. and now I'm starting to pick up on some of the flavors, and, and this is really nice. Yeah, so uh, I'm super happy with this one. The mouthfeel is great. The um, You don't get those English esters because we're not yes. using English ale yeast. Um, so it's a lot more clean and almost like a German style. So it's like an English grain bill, English um, hops, yeah. but German style lager, which is always great, always crisp and clean. So I always love that. Dumb question. What are English hops? Uh, so like Fuggles, um, okay. which I love saying, EKG, East Kent Golding, okay. um, that, those sort of, uh, Willamette. Those Willamette's sort of, an English hop? I believe so. <laughs> Fact check, I, I use them as an English style. So it is I now. Mean, mm. If you tell me it is, I believe yeah. it. But Fuggles and EKG for sure. Um, we use a lot of Fuggles. Fuggles have been hard to find as of this year. Uh, so I've been substituting them with Willamette. Um, and it does pretty similar stuff. So yeah. we've been okay. Yeah. Yeah. No problems here. From here, we can sort of see the board, mm -hmm. depending on how good your eyes are. <laughs> I can see the big ones on the right. You have a ton of different styles on the board. How, yeah. First of all, how do you fill up the board so effectively? 
So that's a scheduling thing. Um, I that's one of those things that I fall back on um, my restaurant management career for um, just keeping that on track and being on schedule. But I enjoy being one of the breweries in the area that has a lot of different styles mm. on the board. I don't want to have 40 different IPAs or 40 different light lagers <laughs> or anything a, like a that. A round of applause from the crowd for not having 40 <laughs> different IPAs. I see a bunch of non-IPA lovers. Yes. I, <laughs> I try to I try to have some IPAs. They're a great style, but yes. like it's it's not everything that we can do. So um, I like to have some lagers, but different lagers. So um, not just the run of the mill pills. I like to have a. So we have an American light lager on all the time. That's our single speed. Um, it's great in a michelada. It's super Ooh. easy to drink. Michelada's out there. Hey, yes, buddy. yes. So we make our own michelada mix, and it is delicious. I love a good michelada from here. Um, uh, but I try to have some different lagers on. So like the Vienna lager is a good one. I want to make a Schwartz beer. Um, the next one that's coming out is going to be like an IPL. Um, so IPA recipe right. written, but lagered and lagered at 55 degrees, not I love it. high temperature. Um, and then also I'm going to make a Maybach soon. Oh. So that'll be for the spring. Nice. Uh, that's going to be a fruity Maybach as well. So I'll dump a bunch of fruity German hops in the Whirlpool and I'm uh, hoping for it to be super fruity and nice to drink. So we'll see how that goes. That, I, but that I'm really excited delicious. about that one. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe if you ever find yourself with like a couple open spots on the board, yeah. you could do like a series, you could do a single IPA and call it one chain. Oh and a double do IPA. Do you hear that, Nick? And call it two, <laughs> two chains. chains. <laughs> we, it's bike themed enough. I feel like we're going to get it working it in it's, here. It's on brand for it's sure. Very on yeah. brand. Uh, what's the biggest pain in the butt as far as like keeping the board filled? I don't know. I mean, just having enough fermenters is hard. Like we have six fermenters, which is great. I'm not complaining, but it's it's a little hard if you want to make more loggers. Sure. Um, we have a good setup. I'm super happy with it. We get a lot of styles on the board. Yes. So I mean. I'm super happy with like where we're at. There's like two repeats on the entire board of 12 beers? Yeah, 12? so we've got 12 on right now. Um, I don't I don't think we have any repeats I mean right now. I mean style repeats. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. So oh, we've got um, my eyes are failing me. American Light Lager, Blonde, a Pub Ale, which is really like an English bitter. Yeah. Um, dark Mild Lager, a Goza, um, Vienna Lager, Amber. Uh, an Irish red, a pale, an IPA, and a smoked porter and a stout. Good lord! So <laughs> busy. try to keep, yeah, try to keep the different styles on for sure. That's one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> yeah, and I will give anybody a T-shirt who has one of each tonight. <laughs> Full size. Yes. Yeah. Yes. None of this flight stuff. Good luck. Good luck. Y yeah. Uh, when it comes to brewing, do you have a certain focus that you're that you're trying for? Um. So I. I uh, I put my focus on one thing throughout the year. So um, last year, I wanted it to be like trying new styles, getting a lot of different styles on the board, um, and just seeing what people like. Uh, this year, I want to dial in recipes a little bit and put yeah. them in competition. So cool. that's more of our focus for this year, especially also um, distribution. Yeah. We're going to do some distributing in the area, try and okay. get our name out there, get people in our, in our doors. And uh, there cans? are some people. Yes. So we will be canning soon. Um, we're just waiting for uh, some storage okay. space. So uh, we do it's have important. that on order. The mall was very nice to uh, uh, approve that for us. So that's going to come soon. And right after we get that, we will start canning again nice. so i know that there's some people out there that will be very excited about yes, that Yes, i'll be very excited <laughs> about that once we can or once we we once you start canning maybe we do another round of uh yeah guava goes absolutely in cans uh -huh. that would be fun <laughs> wink wink i'm always down for that so yeah you put a new one out there <laughs> yeah or maybe we do a series of like first we did guava then we do like mango yeah. or I'm down. I, I, I'm telling her this in front of people so she feels awkward I mean, enough the, to say yes. The goza yeah. would be a good idea because it's different. Like yeah. I don't think there's very many people who actually can goza. The, so, there's nobody in the area that really makes a goza. 
Yeah. I mean, you I, know, I haven't tried a lot. If, so. you, if you want a sour, you go to Casa Agria, but yeah, and they make Goza's incredible on the sours. They do. <laughs> no, no, no Goza's on the menu. I'm just saying. Uh, speaking of Casa and all the breweries nearby, I mean, even just here in like the Canelo Valley, there's a ton of really good breweries. Yes. A ton of uh, everything. How do you guys set yourself apart from all the good stuff? So, I think every brewer has their own style. I love a cohesive menu where you can tell that that brewer brewed that beer. Um, that that just comes from your brewing style. So yeah. I, I think that everyone in this area is super different. Like Institution makes great, hoppy, like just solid stuff. Um, everything they make is delicious. Their RX Pills is great. Yeah. Everything well, is even awesome. They're, they're big um, boozy stuff. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we try to have just every, something for everybody. And I like variety as well. So um, I think our claim to fame almost is just having a lot of different styles on yeah. the board. Um, Nailed it. Brittany over at Naughty Pine makes the most amazing beer. Yes. Um, so her heard. Belgians are amazing. I'm not a huge Belgian fan, and I love her beer. My Same. absolute favorite has been my Czech Romance, that Czech dark oh, lager that she made. So good. Um, I, I also every face love, in the crowd is like, oh. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah so, <laughs> so good. So good. Um, also, supply chain deficit. She always has that amber on. Yep, always so great. Um, and love her as a person. She's all right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> love her. Yeah. Um, She's the best, and uh, we go to many a uh, emo night together. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yes, a little bit partial, you know. Um, and then uh, Anagrin has the best German lager. I mean, no one can stand up. No. And uh, I'm not biased at all. It's no. not like my husband works there. Well, they all, I was going to say, they also have the best looking <laughs> assistant brewer. I know, right? Uh -huh. It's like, uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. It's not like I'm married to him. No, no. Mm, no. Not, do you have any other fun collabs coming up? Uh, so I'm going to collab with Booze League next. Don't talk about that. <laughs> yes. So another do? amazing podcast in the area. It's mm -hmm. uh, Wiley and Coley. There and you guys definitely know who that is. Uh, and Wiley does all of our amazing marketing. There was a huge shift in our marketing. And it was freaking amazing. And I had five different people text me the day that <laughs> Wiley took over and was like, did someone take over your marketing? And I was like, yes, Wiley did. And look at him now. He's and blushing. And look at him now. Look at him now. He's bright red. <laughs> give it up for but the guy we'll on the be, camera. Yeah, give it, give it up for Wiley. <laughs> Wait, don't give him the biggest he's pop of the night. He's physically running away right now. Um, yeah, so that'll be our next one. Um, nice. I've also, I also really would like to put together one with um, Last Name Brewing, which is another um, all-female brew team. Oh, nice. Um, so she is um, part of my Pink Boots chapter yeah and we've been just trying to get together we're both a little bit busy it'll so, happen yeah it'll happen yeah so that'll that's just down the road whenever both of us are free but we'll definitely do one with them they're out in la and they're and she's amazing um she's won awards already and just took over nice so um that's gonna be a crazy good head brewer that's like the, the she's already incredible and that's hannah and danny over okay. there um, the next one, I'm hoping to get one together with uh, somebody local. So I'll maybe if Transmission will have me um, or Institution. Just or start yelling whatever. names out yeah. if they happen to listen. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping that they listen. Like, yeah. hint, hint. Nudge, hey, nudge. Hey, Chaz over at Malibu. What oh, you yeah. Doing? So Chaz yeah. has already invited me to our his Pink Boots brew. Nice. So I'm definitely doing All that. Right. That'll be one of the collabs. So uh, I know Nick from 14 Cannons listens. Oh, he'll uh, he'll always invite me to the Pink Boots brew. Yeah. So, so let's let's get some collabs going, I love fellas. That. Yes, yes. So I would be down to do collabs with anyone. All right. Last question area, before honestly. we drink the next beer: What are your brewery pet peeves? Ooh, I mean, a dirty tank is like not yeah. not good. A assistant brewer Nick, I hope you're paying attention. <laughs> No, Nick is great. Nick's um, great. But he, no, like a dirty tank, you got to clean it. I mean, yeah. I think my pet peeves are just keeping everything clean. Okay. Um, that's 90% of brewing, honestly, is uh, keeping everything clean. Um, that's, I mean, you're a glorified janitor as a brewer, yeah. really, because you're cleaning 95% right. of your time. And you then, just don't have the keys. Yeah. 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 That's, that's most of <laughs> brewing. Uh, all right. Let's talk about our last beer up here. Okay. What do we have? So we've got our Pale Rider. Um, this is one of our flagship beers. 
And um, one of the beers that David and I have both worked super hard on, so I really want to put this in competition. Um, that's going to be one that definitely goes into competition this year. Uh, definitely a good, solid pale ale. Has a little bit of pininess, good yeah. amount of hoppiness, but um, a citrus brightness. As it warms up, you really get the fruit coming forward. Yeah. Like yeah. at first, you get like the dank really is present when it's cold. Yes. And now it's been sitting here for so this half is, hour or so. This is and... all Citra and Amarillo hops. Okay. We use Bravo for our uh, bittering hops. So anything bitter, it's normally Bravo for us. Okay. Um, but that doesn't really matter as far as flavor goes. It's just bittering. Um, the. The Citra and Amarillo are in the Whirlpool as well as the Dry Hop, so it gives a lot of like that bright citrusy character, a little bit of tropical, um, but mostly citrus. Yeah. But really ton- nice, refreshing, super crisp. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and as it warms up, tons of citrus, tons mm-hmm. of fruit. Uh, the yeah. dank kind of surprisingly goes down a little bit. Yeah, and, uh, yeah but enjoyable dank. Like oh, people yeah, yeah, yeah. don't... I wasn't a huge fan of dank, and um, this is a good amount for me. And this is definitely something that David showed me because okay. I was not a dank uh, hop person, and he definitely opened my eyes to how dank hops can be enjoyable. There could be a wrong amount of dank. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, there's a certain brewery in Escondido that overdoes it sometimes, but we won't talk about them. <laughs> Um, all right, we have a ton of listener questions. Thanks, everybody, for the questions. Yes, thank you for your questions. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thanks, Chu, for half these questions. <laughs> thank you, Chu. <laughs> uh, if anybody has any more, there's a couple minutes left to get them in. The question cards are at this table right here. The people listening at home don't know what I'm talking about. But we'll start off with the first question from Chu, your beer. He says, will you do a collab with shadow grove brewery um if they will have me absolutely because i love them and they make amazing beer um and i also uh am very good friends with one of their assistant brewers uh tyler yeah so i would love to do that um so shadow grove i will definitely reach out to you but if you would have me are you listening i would i would do it for sure shadow grove (laughs) uh this comes from nameless how did you make a sour beer without ruining your clean beers? So, um, sour beers are made with lactobacillus for a lot of places. Yes. Um, I use a modified West Coast ale strain made by Scott Laboratories, and it is not a bacteria, so it does not overtake any of my equipment. So nothing gets infected. Right. So, a, a typical um, sour beer is actually an infected beer. Yeah, so it's actually a bacteria, so it's technically a... I guess an infection, yeah. like an infectious beer. I don't know. I a purposeful. I, yes, like on purpose. You're getting that like sour, yeah. very wild yeast uh, flavor. So, um, lactobacillus is definitely a sour beer yeast. That's what it's been forever. And um, I use just a genetically modified West Coast ale strain, which makes lactic acid, which is awesome because it keeps my equipment clean. Right. You don't have to yeah. brew off site. Yeah. Have to go and crazy I would like cleaning. to make clean lager. So right. it, it's awesome to be able to make a goes or um, like a sour beer. Yeah. And be able to also make a light lager, like an American light lager or a lager like Hummingbird. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a fairly new strand, right? Oh, yeah. Like they and, just developed um, like last year or next, two years ago? in the last like two to three years. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember uh, Nick from 14 was telling me about it. He's like, look what they just released. And it's like, incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, and it's just like Kvike East where um, that Kvike East makes beer with fruit esters, but at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Right. And I use that for our hazy IPA. Okay. And it gives like a great... Um, pineapple character but it also makes stable haze so i dry hop our beer at knockout with the yeast pitch at the same time and do you ferment at 90 degrees yeah and ferment at 90 degrees so that 90 degrees gives like a pineapple flavor as well as gives you stable haze in the beer okay and that's something i learned from david as well so that's some awesome nerd stuff yes uh, I laughed as I read this. This one also comes from Chew Your Beer. Again, he wants <laughs> Thanks, to know. <laughs> he wants to know: Are you down to make Cone Hops in Harmony? Oh, then I need to turn it around, or something else with Chew and Greg. 
Uh, backstory, Chu and I made a homebrew for uh, Pozole Palooza, and, the, and we called it Cone Hops and Hominy. So now he, okay. he wants okay. you to make Cone Hops so, and Hominy. So I actually really like peppered beer, so um, talk to me. Oh. <laughs> Chu, you bring the peppers, she'll bring the beer. Yes. We'll, we'll yes. make this happen. I actually went to go get uh, White Walls with Thai chilies before the podcast at okay. Institution. So uh, White Walls Thai chilies, guys. Little uh, courage juice that. before we started. I like that. Uh, this question comes from Coley. You a lot of beer. She says, Monica, <laughs> what, what is your favorite beer recipe you've brewed here at Petals? Ooh, that's a hard one. Probably ride or die. So that was my favorite. That was my first recipe that uh, David gave me the uh, the um, option to brew when I was an assistant brewer, and okay. it's a rye IPA, and people liked it. And I haven't made it again, so we've got to bring that back. I, I heard like two woos. You want more of yeah? that? All right. You want ride or die again? All right. I'll make it again. <laughs> that was the one. That you, the, is that the one that came out over the summer? Ride or die. There's oh, no. That I think was it Beach was Cruiser. Fall. So that's in the summer, um, that was Beach Cruiser. Yeah, that's that's one of my favorites of. as well. That was a good one. Um, so for the people who liked Beach Cruiser, I made a hazy IPA with the same um, yeast and hops, just hazy version. Okay. Um, that is going to be out like next week or the following. So right. just check back with us. But the next hazy, that foggy ride number 12, is going to be very similar to Beach Cruiser. Nice. So if you liked Beach Cruiser, come back. I loved Beach Cruiser. That yes. was delicious. Yes. That was very good. Uh, this question comes from Pablo, who also, Guava Rush, my favorite name. Uh, <laughs> Greg, when are you going... <laughs> Greg, when are you going to change your Instagram handle from Unfiltered Greg to El Presidente of Craft Beer Republic? <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's definitely a, a question for you. And that's a lot to type in. Let's see if we can like <laughs> tighten that up a little bit. It's fair. It's fair. El Presidente. El Pres. Yeah, maybe El Pres. El Pres. El uh, Pres. Yeah. Craft Beer Republic CBR. El Pres de CBR. El, El Pres de CBR. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thanks for the uh, suggestion yep, there. Yep. You've heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, I'm going to get the emails. You haven't changed your handle yet. Uh, and this one comes from No Name. It says, what is the difference between a goza and a sour? So gozas are slightly salted. Um, so at the end of your, uh, these guavas are making me thirsty. That's the name. It should be a little bit salty, which makes you want to take another sip. And uh, it's a great name for that as well, because these guavas are actually making you thirsty. It's true. <laughs> and, and would you say that a goza is most similar to like a Berliner? Like a Berliner is like an unsalted goza? Or am I way off? You can tell me I I'm don't, stupid. No, no so I, I actually don't know enough to tell you yes or okay. no, but for me, yes. Okay. It's like a salted Berliner. Because Berliners are not super sour. Yeah, in, in flavor profile, I think you're right, for yeah. sure. Um, but I, I also don't really know all that much about sours, gozas, or Berliners. So um, in my opinion, yes, you're right. correct. I nailed it. <laughs> Go me, everybody. Um, all right. Any words of wisdom for aspiring brewers? Just work hard. I mean, um, and never stop trying. I, I was lucky that somebody believed in me, and uh, I have David and Brad to thank for that. Absolutely, because it, without them think, like believing in me, I would not be where I am today. But just brew at home, homebrew, Learn as much as you can and never stop trying because you'll get there. And don't be discouraged. It's hard as a woman in the industry. Yeah. Um, don't be discouraged and join your local Pink Boots chapter if you are in the industry because, or uh, join Daughters of Ninkasi. Yeah. Because that is an amazing situation and, yeah. and place for women that love beer. And, and they put on um, fun events, and they have fun meetups. Yes, meet and we're going to do a collab with them, too. So, uh, yeah. yes, uh, please just keep trying, because you will be told no by somebody, and it's not the truth. So <laughs> just keep I trying. I like that, yeah. Uh, if uh, Brad came up to you with a blank check, what would be the one thing you would buy for the brew house? An RO unit. A better RO unit. Better RO unit. And he knows that. Okay. 
He knows. I was just, I was just see if I get him to cough up He'll a few bucks. He'll probably do it for me too, yeah. so don't worry. Well, now yeah. it's out I'm not there. even, I'm not even unhappy. Like he's, <laughs> he's gonna do it. So. <laughs> All right, we're gonna wrap things up with some rapid fire questions. Okay. As we do at the end of every interview, first thing that comes to your mind. Don't think about it too long. These are supposed to be stupid. What's the first beer you ever drank? Stone IPA. What's the first beer you ever brewed? Citra IPA. Okay. What's your uh, favorite style to brew? Lagers. Cans or bottles? Cans. What's your favorite beer and food pairing? Ooh, anything spicy with an IPA. Okay. Uh, it's Wednesday night. What are you drinking? Smoked porter. Nice. What is your beercation destination? Ooh. Germany, Munich, Germany. <laughs> one person for Germany. Uh, what's your favorite outside beer? So not one of your own. What's your favorite outside beer? Supply chain deficit, Naughty that's Pine. That's a good one. Uh, your favorite non-beer hobby? Playing D and D. What hop are you currently crushing on? Ooh, um, Lotus. This is one of my favorite questions because we. Before we find out that the brewers drink the worst beer in the world. What's your favorite guilty pleasure beer? Montucky Cold Snack. Oh, that's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good. What's it's your... a snack. It's a treat. It, it's a snack. It's a snack. Yeah, it's a legit snack. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite hangover cure? Uh, pho or ramen. Okay. And finally, your favorite word or slang for being drunk? Hmm. Shit faced. Nice. If I can say that. I, you can, <laughs> it's your place. You say whatever you want. Any kids out there? Okay. Uh, I think that is every, any other questions before we hit some music. I'll take that as a no. No? Monica, right. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for brewing this delicious beer and letting me watch um, you all well, day. Well, you're the one who gave me the style, so <laughs> thank you. Thanks for letting me give you some homework. <laughs> I, I suggested the beer style, and then she read a book about it. I mean, no one. I would not have come up with Goza without you. So, I mean, that's up to you. I am a genius. Thank you guys for you coming out. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. Make sure you go drink every beer on the board. Come tell Monica how great she is before the night's over. <laughs> <laughs> drink that goza hopefully it doesn't I mean hopefully it lasts long but hopefully it doesn't last long for all it's, the right reasons it's not gonna last long yeah so uh, um, there's a ton of it so please drink it but I, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's gonna disappear I hope so uh, just for money purposes but not for <laughs> my purposes uh, thank you guys once again you can find Monica on the gram at Momoa Go Go which is with three O's at the end three but, O's I mean it's one of my favorite things Momo to type into the gram yeah, yeah so good you find us at Craft Beer Republic you find me shortly as El Prez de CBR. Uh, of course, yes. Craft Beer Republic. You better talk. change it right after this. <laughs> Hold on, where's my phone? And Petals and Pints Brewing. Yes. yes. Petals and Pints Come visit Brewing. Petals. Uh, they are on the socials as well. And thank you, Petals and Pints. And maybe this is Wiley's fault for having the same handle across the board. Not having eight different handles. <laughs> uh, Petals and Pints Brewing, Petals and Pints Brewing dot com. Over here in Thousand Oaks, near the mall. If you're at the mall, uh, don't go shopping, go drinking. So, anyways, I hope everyone out there is staying very well hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. And hello, Vanessa.